inspired by who inspires people. So today I'm going to talk to someone who's inspired me and at the end of the interview I'm going to ask them someone who's inspired them and then next week I'm going to interview that person meeting them for the first time on camera. I hope that some of this inspires you. The person I've chosen is an actress. In my graduating year at Ryerson, we went to see the National Theatre School's graduating year, do a show, do a play, and when this actress came out, um, she was playing a maid, and it was just so subtle and so committed that it had such an enormous effect on the entire audience and on me. It changed me as an actress. And I am so pleased and honored to sit down and talk to Susan Coyne. The yes. I'm talking about? Yes, it was. And what do you remember about that? Oh, I love that part. It was a really small part, but it was a turn, you know. And it was the uh, the wife of the uh, the gallows master. What do you call him? The guy, the executioner, the executioner's wife, and this little petit bourgeois who was talking to the prisoner, and uh, the prisoner who was about to die, and treating him like a surly teenager, and saying, "We don't have moods in this house. We set the cat on them." What do you like in a director? Well, my friend Martha Byrne says uh, the job of a director is to connect the actor to the text. And, and I think that's what a director does. Uh, I really like a director who is equally interested in your energy and the text's energy and, and can find a way to put them together. You know, we made, we made this little film about Robin Phillips and he had this miraculous ability to not just impose his idea of what a play was or what the playwright was saying, but to connect the energy of the writer with the energy of the actor in this sort of alchemical way that was amazing. How do you deal with working with a director who doesn't do that? Well, um, <laughs> that's kind of your job, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think one of the things is you get some skills and you learn how to interpret what a director is saying to you and translate it into, it's a bit more work, translate it into your own language and bring your own you know, I mean, unfortunately, you know, directors like Robin are extremely rare. Mm -hmm. and, and most people often are kind of learning along the same time you are. So you have to kind of find a way to find a common language. And I've learned some tricks for kind of in keeping my own thing going. But, but mainly because I worked with directors like Robin who taught me how to work more deeply, how to take charge of my own process and things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. What about theater school? Did you, what was that like? Theatre school was three years of complete confusion, really. <laughs> is, that, is it different for anyone? Yeah. And uh, I came out thinking, well, well, you know, what do I know? But a, a really great teacher I had at theatre school said, you won't know what you know for five or ten years. And, and I found that to be true over, right. over time, that things come that you think, oh, that's what they meant. Right. When did you know you wanted to be an actress? Uh, I know, I don't know, because I went to school and got a history degree and I, I don't know what I was thinking. Where were you? Where did you at grow Queens. up? I went to Winnipeg. I grew up in Winnipeg mainly. So how you left Winnipeg at what age? At 18 to go at 18. to University of Queens. And how many brothers and sisters? I have four brothers. Three, three brothers and one sister. And you're where in there? And I'm number four. It was a very boisterous family and I was predictably the very sensitive one who cried at card tricks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I guess I, I, uh, I guess I always, there was some part of me that always, I guess, knew that I needed an outlet for that. that right. I, I wasn't going to be a lawyer crying on the stand, you know, that right. I was going to have to find a place where that was, uh, like, a uh, useful, leaky tear ducts were, like, kind of a thing. <laughs> right, right. It's harder to get people to go to theater now. Mm -hmm. We're all so happy in our, in our houses with our Netflix mm -hmm. and our movies. And what do you say to that? Like, how do you feel about what's going mm -hmm. on with that? I think theater is always dying and always being reborn. <laughs> it becomes cool to go back to the theater and see things in real time and live time. And I, my son is now writing for the theater and is part of the theater community. And there's this excitement about going to see something live again, like it's like handmade or, you know. Yeah. I think that there's still something so amazing about being in a room with people who are all breathing at the same time and having the same emotional 
experience at the same time. I think there's something absolutely transformative about that that's, that goes back to, you know, ritual and religion and so on. Mm -hmm. And I think people crave it. It doesn't go away. It's part of human nature to crave that, to right. want to be, have that. I wonder, have you ever gotten a bad review? Yes. <laughs> Oh. Do you remember anything about oh, it? Oh, of course I do. <laughs> of course. I stopped reading them at that point. I remember when I was uh, playing Juliet at Stratford, and um, they have, for some reason, they used to have all the reviews stacked no, backstage. No. And I was like, oh, I'll just flip through. And there was some little small paper or something, and I thought, oh, how bad could it be? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> and you'll always find this. What's the worst thing anyone can say about you? Someone will say it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they said, as for the Juliet, I don't know what to say. She's not beautiful. Um, she's not charming. She has no wit. I don't know why they cast her. And I went, oh, okay. I'll just go for my first scene. Have no? a good show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and, I, and, I, I taught, and they, they taught me that you just it's dumb to read reviews. It's, I mean, maybe you read them afterwards, but there's no point reading them when you're in a show. It's one person's opinion. And... What do you think it takes to be have longevity and success in this business? Um, perseverance yeah. and a willingness to learn and to keep falling on your face and trying things. Have you ever dried on stage? Yes, <laughs> quite recently. <laughs> quite recently? Oh God, I want to hug you. What happened? <laughs> oh, well, just a moment in our final dress. And it'll probably happen again where I just thought, hmm. Oh, this is an interesting unscripted pause. If I can't remember the line, I will remember what's supposed to be happening here. All right, so uh, I'm gonna ask you uh, questions, mm -hmm. and you can just answer them. Uh, today it will be this, another day it could be something else. Okay. Okay? All right, uh, five plays. Name five plays. Uh, <laughs> they'll be The Cherry Orchard, Three Sisters, as You Like It, hmm. Aunt Dan and Lemon, a play I did early on, and uh, what's another great, I guess Twelfth Night. Mm. Your perfect pizza. Uh, it has to have spinach in it somewhere, <laughs> and then maybe some mushrooms. All right. <laughs> uh, if you could be any age for a week. Oh, probably five or six. What cheers you up? Um, what cheers me up? Music, uh, podcasts, I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm walking the dog in the ravine. That is my perfect cheer up, cheer up place. Morning or night? Morning. If you could bring any person back to life? Shakespeare. Ooh. Ever been fired? Hmm. No, have I? I don't think I've been fired. I think I've made myself unavailable or something like that. I don't think I've been fired. Okay. Best decision you've ever made? Having kids. Favorite junk food? Uh, chocolate chip cookies. An animal that scares you? A snake. Who would you love to do a love scene with? Oh. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. Hmm. I fall in love with everybody I work with pretty well. I mean, and that's your job, you know? So as, as you say in your class, you have to have chemistry with everybody. So I get crushes on everybody. Mm. First job? First job was at a motel in Kenora, Ontario called the A&B Motel. I might have been fired from that. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me I only lasted like three or four days. Worst habit? Oh. I have cigarettes every once in a while. <gasps> yeah, I know. It's just awful. <laughs> uh, favorite game as a child? Favorite game? I loved skipping. Mm. I loved learning. I felt so amazing when I could learn to get into double dutch. Mm -hmm. What inspires you? What inspires me are people who can find, especially right now, um, the uh, light in the darkness. Three words to describe yourself? Um, curious, um, confused, <laughs> um, optimistic. So who should I talk to next? Who would you like me to talk to that's inspired you? Well, I have a friend 
uh, a friend from theater school days. We trained as actors together in Montreal, and, and she became my friend, my fast friend, on the very first day. And she has kept me laughing ever since. And she is one of those people I was talking about who can uh, not only take uh, dark things and find a light in them, she has become uh, a writer and, most importantly, a teacher. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's great. I can't wait to meet her. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That's good. We're good.